Talk Recorded live. A warm welcome to everybody participating today in the Mayan Cross Community Telewebcast. This is our seventh out of a total of 20 episodes that we've been creating. Uh, we do these every 13 days according to the Mayan Sacred Calendar's Tracina cycle. I am Barbara Sadler, creator of the Mind Cross website and producer of these calls. With me today is Jeff Grant, who's our technical guru, and Kenneth Johnson, who many of you know as the author of Jaguar Wisdom and who has just published a new book called Jaguar Medicine. And this book uh, goes way beyond what most of us have been understanding about the Mayan healing. So not coincidentally, today is one storm or one kawak on the Mayan sacred calendar. And we chose this day for Kenneth's content because there is an uh, interconnection between Mayan medicine and the essence of this energy of kawak, today's day sign. And for those of you uh, who are new to this, uh, these calls, we'll be using English uh, and the Quiche language for the Mayan uh, references. And we do this to honor and align with the lineage um, uh, from mostly from the highlands of Guatemala who first started bestowing the Mayan crosses to, to the Western world. Um, which was a, a remarkable uh, uh, change uh, when it did start happening. So we want to honor that using the Quiche language. Um, and this program really has been breaking new territory in the Western world. We use a variety of approaches, speakers, and formats uh, with the intention of enlivening our understanding of the Mayan sacred calendar and the Mayan cross. We dialogue and discuss this amazing life navigation system which the Maya have used for millennia within a virtual sacred circle that we create together. Each of us meets in a quiet place beside our candles, our altars, or with our sacred objects, and together we focus with open hearts and open minds to greet and honor the day. The Maya have been keeping the calendars alive by using them in this way, in ritual around the sacred fire. And we are in keeping with that tradition. So now, let's just take a moment to center ourselves in the here and now. You can light your candles to help create this sacred circle. We can sit tall, ground our feet in our seats, and lift our hearts and our heads skyward and take a few very conscious breaths that clear away any clutter in our minds. Take a moment to do that, to find that peace, that clarity within. And from this place, we can come forth and ask the heart of the heavens, the heart of the earth, the heart of the wind, the heart of the water, and the heart of the fire to be with us in this moment, in our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. We can feel the first four grandparents appear almost out of nothingness. And they're noticing our willingness, sincerity, and gratitude for their guidance. And our ancestors come forth. And we feel the spirits of all sacred places appearing now.
And we thank Ahau for the Nawal Kawak storm in English. Kawak. And I was feeling very blessed last evening around sunset when the energies kind of flailing, peaking, hot energies of 13 Tihash, or 13 Flint, which was yesterday, all of a sudden started transforming as these big, dark thunderheads brood overhead and Kawak, the energies of the storms, came rushing in from the west. And a big downpour started happening, quenching the thirst of our gardens and our crops. And then, as it passed through, leaving rainbows glimmering in the east as the sun went down in the clouds and the rain in the west, revealing this crystal clarity after the deluge. This is the essence of Kawak. Kawak is the energy also of the midwives whose wisdom, tenacity, and strength coach new lives through the channels and the pains of childbirth to the cries of new beings breathing into their earthly selves for the first time. Kawak, the turtles who swim deep, far and wide in our oceans, committed to their femininity, to their cycles of life. Kawak, a trusted guide to the healing of the most desperate parts of our souls. Kawak is also family and community, the sense of belongingness, the sense of integrity that comes from living so closely with so many other people. We thank you, Mother Earth and Father Sky, for the Noal Kawak. Let's take a moment to feel this presence emerge within our circle, becoming more and more obvious with each beat of our hearts. Okay, now we've set our stage. Now we have our circle. And in the center today is Kenneth Johnson. If you don't know him already, it's high time you do. He's a highly regarded and very prolific researcher, writer, teacher, and astrologer. He's a pioneer in his own right. He published a complete guide to the Mayan sacred calendar or the Chokki back in 1997. And his work has really helped probably thousands of people get their arms around uh, this system. His academic background is really a benefit for us because he studied uh, comparative and Eastern religions which gives us uh, a unique perspective because it's combined with his boots on the ground, his ethnographic research and achievements with the Maya in Guatemala and Mexico. And his ability to decipher the esoterica of the ancients is just a, a gift for all of us. And most recently, he, um, he created this project, the Curandera Project, Curandera is the Spanish word for healer. Uh, It ends with an A, so it's typically a feminine healer. Um, And the donations from this helped fund uh, his work with this this new book, Jaguar Medicine, that he co-authored 
with a woman uh, named Anita Gar, who has been living down in Momos Tenango for, for quite some time. So it's through this uh, project that we're able to um, get our hands on and, and begin digesting the, uh, the wisdom that's provided for us and hasn't really been unveiled anywhere else but through the book Jaguar Medicine. So, Kenneth, are you here? Are you with us? I, I am here. I am uh, good ready day, to go. Good day. We have people from all over the world now on the call. Um, so we don't say good morning because it's afternoon or evening to some of these folks. Right. Uh, it, okay. Uh, so, so we'll, it's just another moment in sacred time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we're just so delighted that you're with us today. Thank you for carving out the time from your very... Uh, your very uh, intense schedule, working with the Maya and doing all your uh, astrological work um, and moving, I guess. You're going to be moving soon. So yeah. we really appreciate your, your taking the time with us. Um, and as we discuss, there, there are a few things. As I've, I've moved through Jaguar Wisdom, I haven't finished the whole book yet, but... Um, I'd like to ask a, a few questions just to kind of stimulate the the conversation and then we want to make sure that we leave some time for questions from the audience. So um, if any of you uh, want to chat in or uh, we'll leave time on the voice uh, mode here for, for Q&A as well. Um, and so the, the first thing that I think might be helpful is, um, you know, kind of doing a level set because most of us have have learned, uh, most of us on this call have learned a fair amount about Mayan cosmology and the Cholki uh, over the last several years. Uh, And this audience really is is going deeper and is ready to go deeper. Um, But can you give us kind of a, a framework for understanding how the calendar connects with the healing arts used by the Maya? Um, Yes. Uh, By and large, this is something that you find in the western highlands of Guatemala um, at the village level where people still live in accordance with uh, the ancient calendar. There are certain uh, days of the calendar that have a strong connection with one kind of healing or another. And a person who's born upon that day might actually be watched by the elders who might be sitting around thinking, hmm, now is this one, you know, showing any talent for uh, such and such a, a, a mode of healing? You know, does such and such a person seem to have the gift that goes with their day sign? And some of the day signs, which have specific gifts, of course, as you've already mentioned, um, today is one of them, kawok, uh, um, or storm in English. And this, you know, it, it got to the point where Anita and I started to call it the day of the divine feminine, because it is a day where mothers and wives are honored and where women uh, go to the sacred shrines on their own, apart from the men, to do ceremony on their own. But above all things, it honors female healers, and I believe you mentioned this as well, uh, especially midwives um, in communities where almost all births are home births. Mm. There's, basi- there's basically no such thing as a birth that does not happen without a midwife. So a midwife tends to be one of the most respected human beings uh, in any village community. And uh, definitely this is linked with the day sign Kowalk. And then there are other uh, specialties of healing that have their own uh, day sign associated with them. Uh, so that a person born upon such a day might be carefully watched and monitored uh, 
um, you know, uh, in respect to seeing whether they have uh, those talents. And uh, one day I should mention is the day Tehash. And I don't know which English translation you use for it, obsidian knife or flint knife. We use what flint. But okay, flint. Flint on the um, Minecraft website. Okay, real good. Um, yes, because uh, if Kowalk is the symbol of female healers, then Tehash is the symbol of male healers. And if you think about it, you know, it's a flint knife. Um, a warrior can hold a knife. A warrior can fight with a knife. But a surgeon can hold a knife and can heal with it. So that's another day um, strongly associated with healers. Of um, Well, we used to call them, uh, by and large, we used to say that uh, Tehash is associated with what we call weseros, which means bone setters. And uh, as you can probably guess from the name, this is an indigenous uh, type of chiropractic. And yet there are also people, you know, who are regarded as having uh, the potential for healing because of their day sign. And we would not ordinarily think of these people in terms of healing because, uh, and maybe I'll say a few words about this when I've run through the day signs, but the whole concept of health and wellness is different in my own society than it is in our own. Um, and in fact, we cannot be in a state of total well-being unless we are in harmony with our community. So the day sign, ach, um, which I guess you would call Reed or Cain. Um, Reed. Reed, okay. Um, these people uh, are considered healers because they are counselors for the rest of the community. And like I said, we might not ordinarily think of that, you know, specifically in terms of healing, but they certainly do because the community has to be a oneness. Holistically, it has to be um, a healthy entity. And I don't know, um, do you remember, I mean, you know, so Ach is, is the reed, which is tall and straight, and sometimes it's a corn stalk. Um, we use the word Ach simply as a term of honor or respect, you know, as, as when we say, for example, a daykeeper is an Ach Heik. Uh, which means a master or specialist, an ach, in terms of the day. And I don't know, do you remember seeing the men in the black suits who were holding uh, what looked like a staff or a baton tipped with silver? Do you remember those guys? Um, you mean in, anywhere in Guatemala or within a certain clan? Well, I, um, with the time when you were in Momos, for example. I, I wouldn't remember that specifically. Okay. Uh, those, yeah, those, uh, those, but they, were, they carry a staff with a silver tip? Yes. And that, mm -hmm. because it's straight like the corn stalk and like the reed, and because it establishes their honor and their authority, that uh, is also called ach. And it symbolizes the fact that they are the counselors um, of their community. So that's mm -hmm. another day sign that's uh, in a certain way associated with healing. And um, two more that I really should mention. Oh, yes, and, and uh, the day sign kech, the deer, can be in the, the exact same category. And then to look at another form of healing, we have to remember that the Maya um, often use dreams both to diagnose and to seek symbolically for ways to heal. And uh, the day sign emosh, um, I guess you would say crocodile in English? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, that's okay. Um, they are said to be, uh, to have an extraordinary talent for dreams and for the reading and interpretation of dreams, for divination through dreams. And then finally, I would also like to mention um, 
I think you would probably call it rabbit in English. We would call uh, it, um, are you talking about canil? Canil. Uh-huh. I oh, think oh. we call it, in English, we we have it as seed. Okay. And, and that, you know, that's a little closer. Rabbit was an Aztec term. Um, and it was not commonly used in other Mesoamerican uh, lists of the names of the days. But anil uh, literally means that which is turning yellow in, in K'iche. So it has the context of ripening. And seed is good because they, they do perform agricultural rituals on Canil days, and quite often I've climbed the hills uh, with, with some of the Maya to work in their cornfields on Canil days because it's considered such a great day for that. And Canil is, you know, because of its association with seeds, with yellowing, with ripening, with corn, with all things that grow, this is the day of herbalists. And in fact, uh, one of uh, my teachers, Doña Victoria Kiech, um, she always said that um, when the moon is full on a canil day, that is when we should go out and we should gather herbs because they have more power, they have more juice, they have more energy. Um, and when I say full moon, I'm talking about the two or three days when the moon gives the appearance of being full. Um, you, you, so usually that correspondence will happen a couple of times a year, but that's when all the herbalists go out and they collect their herbs and then they dry them and prepare them for the next 20 days and then they consecrate them for healing uh, on a Tamil day. And to continue with our theme of day signs or nawales and uh, healing, I should mention that there are certain days uh, that are um, regarded as excellent for performing healing rituals. Um, Kanil is one of those days. Um, Kowalk, today's date, is yet another. And um, I mentioned Tihash. So uh, you can see a lot of healing rituals being performed if you would happen to go to the shrines on that day. Can, and, I, can I ask a quick question here? Does it matter sure. what, what number or is it just every uh, on the 20-day cycle? Um, so a one, a one Tihash or a, a nine Tanil? Well, or, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that uh, okay. just a second here. I want to mention um, one more day which is Ahpu, or uh, um, whatever you call it in English. Uh, uh, sun, I think. Sun? Okay. Uh -huh. um, you know, you, you do see uh, rituals, because, see, we're, we're also not in a complete state of wellness unless we're in harmony with our ancestors. So that that's the day to perform, you know, rituals meant to bring us into harmony with the ancestors. And you ask if there are special days. And basically, um, I don't know about all communities. I know that this is basically true in Cape Sultanango as well as in Momo Sultanango. Um, but uh, there, there, there's, of course, uh, people will go on every one day, the beginning of a Trisena. Like if we were in Guatemala right now um, mm -hmm. and we went down to what they call Paja, which is the place uh, that literally means place of water, but it's the place of the number one. Um, so they would celebrate uh, the beginning of each Trisena. And, uh, you know, and then um, a little farther on, they would celebrate the sixth day and the eighth day and the nine day because the middle days are the days of the ritual cycle. So whenever, you know, one of these healing days, you know, be it Kowalk, be it uh, Tehash, be it uh, Ahpu, um, uh, or Hanil, you know, if, if one of them falls on a one, a six, an eight, or a nine, it, it's good to do ceremony. I, I remember that, you know, uh, where we would start out at Paha, 
and uh, that that's uh, like a little valley with a river uh, mm-hmm. running through yeah, it. Right. And, and yeah, hence the term place of water uh, for number one. And then, you know, when you celebrate for number six, you're a little higher up on the hill, the sacred hill in the middle of town. And then uh, when you celebrate for the day number eight, you're a little bit higher up, you know, starting to walk up uh, the, the, the main hill and back of town. And then the nine day, uh, which finishes the ritual cycle, uh, by that time you're at the highest altar of them all, the one way up on, on the mountain that overlooks the whole town. So there's kind of like a progress about it. But yes, there are mm-hmm. certain days that uh, are, uh, you know, much more favorable for uh, ritual. So given the fact that we have about five days uh, um, which are uh, allotted to healing rituals and we have, you know, uh, uh, four days that are good for ritual, your chances of being able to perform the healing ceremony in a relatively uh, brief span of time are pretty good. Yeah, and the fact that you've got, okay, so you've got four different numerals and seven different days. I mean, that yeah, makes about a more, more or less. There's a whole and lot of I healing for, involved. I even forgot to mention Khan or Serpent. Oh, yeah, Khan. Um, now, th- this is used for very specific purposes. Um, this is used for the healing of illnesses which we would call psychological or psychomatic when something is just like out of harmony with your soul um, because uh, it does have that connection. The day sign has that connection with uh, the deep, powerful energies you know, within the human body. And uh, they say that people born on that day are very good at performing this kind of healing because... Uh, the you know that there are I, I, it's fairly well known these days that the the bulk of the shamans are uh, initiated on eight bots, but then there's a higher level of shamans that are initiated on eight kiech, and then you know very secretive. Uh, I know that Anita's been to a few of these rituals. I've never come across one, uh, but shamans who have really mastered the energies within the human body so that uh, they can deal with these ruptures of the human soul. It's said that uh, they are initiated on very high-numbered con days. So, yeah, um, you do find a lot of resonance with the sacred okay. calendar. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You said high-numbered uh, con people. Yeah. Well, uh, they're initiated on high-numbered con days. Oh, initiated. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So these are. This is energy healing, then. This is energy. What healing. we would consider energy healing. Um. Yes. That there are a few people that I encountered, um, who go purely by skill. Um. Donia Crescencia, uh, who ran the local uh, women's uh, cooperative of healers, um, she was a very educated person who used herb lore as her primary uh, mode of healing, and uh, she was you know, very technical about it. And then other people like uh, Donia Victoria, whom I mentioned earlier, who used to simply uh, go out and, you know, and cut herbs by the light of the full moon, as it were. Um, she was what I would call an energy healer. Uh, she used to, you know, rather than needing to do deep tissue to, uh, massage to remove, oh, some of the knots and aches and pains that come to your shoulders and your arms and your knees, all she would have to do was, was touch you. Mm-hmm. Maybe once. You know, so... Uh, um, and I would say that a lot of people are a blend. They create a blend of technique and energy. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes sense. So there's a, in Chapter 3 of okay. Jaguar Medicine, you talk about the call to healing. Yes. So um, 
for our audience here, can you speak to how does one know if they're really just geared for doing their own healing or doing the healing of others? Because we don't yes. necessarily have elders watching over us in our childhood. No, we, we don't. Um, they do, and and that's true. Um, and a lot of it does go on, you know, at a certain level, which doesn't really apply to our communities. Like somebody will say, hmm, uh, you know, uh, Esperanza over uh, two doors down, she was born on a Caneal day. Maybe she's good with herbs. I think I'll knock on her door and ask her. But um, mm-hmm. as for receiving a call, because there are people, and this can happen, you know, to anybody, uh, even if they have absolutely no connection with any of the day signs that I have mentioned, um, it still will occasionally take place that a person will purely and simply be called to the art. Now, sometimes they are called in dreams. Um, In the Yucatan, particularly, um, there's a tradition that if a little old man comes to a male or a little old woman comes to a, uh, to a woman, and if they're dressed in clothing, you know, from ancient times, uh, and they, they say, well, you know, you're supposed to be a healer, and I'm going to teach you this and that, you know, about a certain herb, um, then you follow it. Because those dreams, um, especially if they keep recurring, those dreams uh, will serve as evidence uh, that you are intended to be a healer. And this, I suspect, is what in our own society um, we would call these archetypal dreams uh, in the sense that Carl Jung would have intended to use the word, meaning that, you know, a wise old man or a wise old woman, you know, some white sorceress, some Gandalf figure, you know, may appear to us and, uh, you know, make us aware of the fact that we have a gift. So a dream is definitely one way. And then uh, then there's the, the syndrome, which I think is well known to people who have had a great deal to do with uh, shamanic circles and shamanic work. And this is called uh, the wounded healer motif, mm. meaning, you know, those who... Uh, <laughs> Those who have an illness, especially one which cannot be defined, one which resists treatment, one which baffles um, the local uh, medical doctor kind of figure who uh, might be in the village, you know, something which baffles a person like that and just seems like it isn't responding to anything, now that's more likely to be what they call a shamanic illness. Um, You're wounded because you're meant to be a healer. And in fact, uh, they they have several uh, varieties of it. Um, And some of these we would not consider uh, illnesses. Uh, there, There are... For example, if you have extreme aches and pains that just torment your joints, and this this is because you know one of the uh, the energies within the human body, what they call koyopa, which literally means lightning. But uh, when shamans use the word, they mean the lightning inside the blood. It, one of the interesting things, uh, I think most of your audience probably knows that there are many uh, 13s in Mayan lore, and one of them is the 13 joints of the human body. But this energy, this koyopa, um, lightning in the blood, collects in those uh, 13 joints. So if you are just constantly in pain um, anywhere in your joints, it usually means that uh, this incredible uh, lightning energy is trying to wake up. And mm. that is a sign that, uh, you know, that you've got a shamanic illness. And um, a- as unusual as this may sound uh, in our own uh, society, um, 
people uh, who tend to drink a little bit more than normal um, are considered uh, candidates for uh, becoming healers because it shows that they prefer to live in the other world rather than this one, but they're just going about it all wrong. So what mm-hmm. they need to do is uh, clean out and then seek the same under, excuse me, other world connection that they were uh, seeking, uh, you know, through drinking, and uh, to use that other world connection to become a healer. And then also there are people, I, I guess, you know, if you've read a lot of uh, um, Eastern Orthodox mysticism or if you're familiar with, uh, you know, some medieval Christian traditions or even to a certain degree, uh, you can find this in India, there's what's called the Holy Fool, um, you know, the person who just seems to be, um, you know, majorly inept and maladopted to life uh, to the point, you know, where, like, they're an easy target for con men, shysters, thieves um, uh, of all types. Um, and then this can also be a, a shamanic illness. Uh, the, the most severe that I've ever heard about, which is also uh, in Chapter 3, um, was, uh, again, I've mentioned her several times now, Dona Victoria. And, uh, she was the one, so, that's the story that went out on the Facebook page last week, right? That, that, yes, that, that's I'm correct. Jaguar, I mean, some, uh, she, 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 she was, uh, even at a relatively young age, she became so ill with a mysterious illness that, you know, she lost all her hair, she went blind, she couldn't move. Um, and, you know, somehow uh, when when she figured out that this was a shamanic call to healing, she crawled out of bed, you know, long enough to, to gather some herbs and, uh, you know, eventually she healed herself and now she's like an energy battery who, who heals others. So, uh, yes, yeah, the call to healing can come in the form of a dream or it can come in the form of a shamanic illness. But quite often there is, you know, some event in our lives that will mark us as, you know, well, yeah, you're supposed to help other people. You're supposed to be a healer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this is, um, I think, in Chapter 3, there's a whole long list of um uh, of problems that are uh, possibly uh, solved by right. uh, um, going a, down a different uh, direction or aligning yourself more yeah. with the day sign. And you, and, have and, a, you also recount, I think it's early on in the book, page okay. 16, you've got this conversation with Sanik Chantavak. Uh, Jose Sanik, Jose Sanik Chantavak, yes. Okay. And he talks about how important it is how important it is for us to be aligned with our archetypal template, that we should study it, accept it, maintain it, and feed it. And he stresses the importance of serving your Nawal, I'm assuming also your your entire Mayan cross. And um, um, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. That must come into play with this too. I mean, even for those people that don't aren't on the list of day signs or don't necessarily have any of these symptoms, um, wh- how does the Maya think about being out of alignment? I mean, what happens to you if you're oh, out okay, of alignment? Okay. Um, uh, just uh, a, a brief uh, background. Um, because in order to introduce this, I have to, to introduce a broader <laughs> concept. Um, and that is the, the Mayan concept of health and wellness in general. Because in our society, you, uh, you, know, you take your medical insurance card, you go down to the MD, and uh, if uh, all the physical tests that they do on you uh, come out with the numbers that they want, then you're considered healthy. Um, Now, in uh, my own thinking, this very rudimentary level of good physical health, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You also have to be in harmony with um, Mother Earth, 
which means like, you know, we have a care for Mother Earth. We don't pollute Mother Earth. We live in harmony with Mother Earth. Um, They also say with Grandmother Moon, which means that we're adopted to the natural cycles and rhythms of the Earth around us. They say we have to be in harmony with our community, um, which goes to just, you know, it, it, that that's very much a, you know a think globally act locally sort of thing of just you know being a member of your community being helpful in your community that that's a factor of health uh being uh, in harmony with your ancestors is a factor in health and then finally the one uh that you've just asked about being in harmony with your nawal now how do you know if you're out of harmony with your Nawal, you raised that question. And the answer simply is that, um, you know, as uh, those who study uh, Mayan astrology, the day signs, the entire cross, as, as they come to know, each day sign, very much like Western zodiacal signs, but each day sign will have its positive and its more negative traits. Now, um, since today is Kowalk, I'll begin with Kowalk. If, you know, and we've said Kowalk is is a day of women. It's about the wives and mothers um, of uh, the family. And uh, since it's also a day sign of healing, we uh, um, can sort of extrapolate uh, here as well. If you have poor health, if your emotional relationship with uh, your mother, with your spouse, with your family is, you know, to use a term for it, if, it, if your emotional relationship with all these people is like a storm, Um, and uh, if if you have uh, health difficulties, then we can safely assume that uh, you are out of harmony with the day sign Kowalk, and you need to be back in harmony with it. Because if you are in harmony with it, you will have good relations with all family members, especially the women in the family, Um, and it will just seem natural for you, since Kowalk is the day of the Divine Feminine, it will just seem natural for you to, uh, you know, honor women's roles in in life, uh, wherever they may appear to us, and you're likely to have uh, a, a bit of healing talent as well. So this basically just says that along with, you know, being in harmony, uh, as, uh, Jose... Don Jose put it, along with being in harmony with um, the sun and the moon, with the Mother Earth, with the ancestors and the community, we also have to develop a harmony with our own personal archetype. So we're not only in a state of wellness with everybody around us, we're in a state of wellness with our own psychological essence. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get, do you ever get concerns or questions about um, the fact that your day sign and your Mayan cross are um, self fulfilled prophecies, so to speak, and that they they could diminish your choice or, or, or could really alter your decision making or your choice choices? Oh. Um, Based on this, I, I, you know, this notion that you have of who you should be or who you could be? Okay. Um, the same skeptics who, for example, would say that, uh, oh, you know, you're only sticking close to home because you've been reading too much astrology and you think uh, – the the sun sign cancer is supposed to stay at home, so you do. You know, people who would call that a self-fulfilling prophecy are the same skeptics who would say this about uh, the day signs as well. Um, I have never, well, yes, um, I I, I must say that, you know, um, I did not 
frequently hang out with uh, Mayan people who were skeptics um, <laughs> because, you know, I was focusing on uh, spending my time with healers and daykeepers whom, of course, really do believe that we are born with an archetypal imprint, which right. is represented by our day sign, and that it, they, they do believe in freedom of choice. We can turn away from our day sign. We can choose not to uh, um, shape ourselves in accordance with our day sign, but they would also say this is probably not the greatest idea that you've ever had come down the pike. Now, it's true that I meet, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the only times I really meet a lot of my on skeptics is when I'm like stuck next to somebody on the chicken bus who just wants to give me his philosophy of life or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I would say, you know, they, they, they're skeptics in every society. Um, of course, you know, since people are usually calling me up for a Mayan calendar reading, it's unlikely that the people I, I contact, uh, you know, uh, through the Maya community, uh, uh, the, the Americans, the Europeans, the Australians, uh, and so on, it's unlikely that I'm going to, you know, come into contact with the skeptics. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the way you put it is, is, is a very accurate uh, uh, depiction of the way skeptics think. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and that's that's what Sonic said. I mean, it's your template. Accept it. Accept it. Yes. Work so with all uh, the all the possibilities, but accept and, that. And I I should point out that uh, he is not what one would call you know a superstitious uh, village guy. This this uh, individual is actually a full on professor of Mayan languages at the San Carlos University in Guatemala City. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so he's quite quite the intellectual. Um, he was born and raised in Momos. He happened to be uh, visiting uh, one of his relatives, uh, uh, Don Rigoberto, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, where, and we thought, oh boy, he's in town. You know, let let's grab him and talk to him. Well, and so, uh, yeah. All right. Well, there's there's uh, one other area, one other topic that I'd like to cover. Um, oh, okay. Before we do that. Can we just take a moment here and open the floor to um, or the ground, I should say, to people that um, may have a question or a comment for Kenneth? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm uh, ready for Either questions. chat it in or um, I know some of you that are on the phones have muted yourselves. You can feel free to unmute yourself if you like. Um, in this forum, there's no such thing as a silly question, and there's usually more than one answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yes. So, um, you know, this is a good time if, if you have anything um, that you'd like to ask Kenneth ab about this kind of thing or maybe something else that's been noodling in the back of your mind somewhere about your Mayan cross or your template or your um, path as a healer or not. So if anybody has anything, this is a... This is the time to speak. This is a good time. And a lot of times the, the shy people have the, the greatest stuff. Okay, so, yeah, I can definitely believe that, yes. So if anybody's got something... I have a we'll question. Oh. Yes, who's this? Hi, this is Eagle. How are you doing? Eagle, good day. <laughs> hi, I, hi, I think Ken. you know Ken, Thanks. right? Yeah, I, I had a reading with him. Thank you, Ken, for coming oh. up. But it's good to hear you. Okay, good. What, what, what sort of a question do you have today? Well, um, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm really uh, interested about it. And uh, I was wondering, um, you talked about the herbs and... Um, and the actual uh, stuff that they use for the healing. And mm -hmm. um, do you use, uh, and I'm assuming, of course, that these, uh, uh, these plants, these uh, speci species are uh, indigenous to that area, but how much thought, or if any, did you give into alternatives uh, that, you know, are 
are indigenous, indigenous to other areas of the world that might uh, okay. want to use that, this? You know, I am really glad you asked that question because the answer is not what everyone would expect. <laughs> um, and and this, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm that that that's uh, very interesting. Um, actually, most of the books that you will see having to do with Mayan healing were written from the point of view of the Yucatan, um, where they have, of course, a tropical jungle. And like most tropical jungles, there's a lot of interesting um, indigenous plants there. And um, if I'm following your, your reasoning correctly, then yes, these are Extreme, somewhere between difficult and impossible to get your hands on in other countries. Yeah. But uh, where I uh, studied, uh, which is the mountain country, uh, Chiapas, uh, you know, the city of San Cristobal de las Casas, and also uh, in the same chain of mountains, but on the other side of the border in Momostenango, see, they're so high up in the mountains that they don't have as much plant life. And they use a lot of introduced herbs. So um, when you read the book, Jaguar Medicine, um, you will see how resourceful the Mayan people have been in adopting uh, things from other countries. You know, you will find information about rosemary and rue and, um, you know, plants that obviously came from... uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. Uh, they use a lot of eucalyptus, which is from Australia. They use avocados. They use oranges for healing uh, as well, and, you know, lemons and limes, um, and many other common ordinary plants uh, that you would never suspect of having such healing properties. So, uh, in that respect, I'm hoping that the book will be useful because uh, Anita and I compiled a good 25 to 30 pages uh, worth of material on very common plants that just about anyone can access and use for healing purposes. Now, um, there are some people who, uh, instead of using herbs, uh, use massage. So that's another modality. And um, I've also come across uh, healing with, I won't say, well, I don't know what, what the, the, the actual definition of a gemstone is. I've seen uh, a lot of people use quartz, crystals, amber, and especially jade for healing purposes. So they heal with stones as well. So, and um, then, I, you know, the psychological healing Basically, that, that, that's uh, a matter for ritual. So um, the herbs, more, much more common and ordinary than you would think, much more accessible than you would think. But yes, they also use other things like massage and, and uh, ceremonial rituals and um, stones. Okay? Thanks, thanks a lot. That's, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to go to the markets because... You see all kinds of things that you know come from other places, but it really speaks to how sophisticated their market marketing has been over the ages. They and it uh, has to be because it, their survival mm-hmm. and their medicine is based upon their ability well, to get these things. Yes, and uh, they, they've uh, used a lot of. Uh, plants that were introduced uh, for, like I said, there's a couple reasons for it. One is because they're so high up in the mountains, like Momos is 7,500 feet, Um, you know, so you have a a rather limited uh, number of things that uh, grow there. So anything that was introduced from the outside world, uh, they, they, you know, if it's useful to them and they find that it has healing properties, they'll use it. They're not, uh, uh, you know, they're they're definitely not stuck in the past, you know, thinking that they have to use uh, whatever uh, the ancestors from a thousand years ago may have used. Uh, They they use whatever works. They use whatever comes to hand. Yeah. 
We have a, a, another comment also from uh, Guest 8. Very clarifying info, Kenneth. Thank you so much. Managed to find my way to healer profession before finding my Mayan cross, which is a 10 kah with kawas, imosh, and tzikin in it, in the cross. Oh, well, which is the central one? I've, I'm guessing 10 kah. Kah? Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, this is interesting, and I don't know if... Uh, Participant, what did you say, number eight? Uh, uh-huh. I, I don't know if this is, um, if I'm speaking to a man or a woman, but um, Kech uh, is said to have a special talent for midwifery. So, you know, it definitely is... It's a woman. Okay. Um uh, it's definitely on the list uh, of day signs. I think I did mention it when I was running through the day yeah. signs at least once. I didn't yeah, say much about it. Uh huh. Um, well, it, it it functions on a couple of levels. I compared it with uh, Ach because really, you know, these people are community healers, and there, there's a category of shamans that are called Chichkahal. Uh, which means uh, mother fathers, meaning that they serve the community with the nurturing nature uh, of a mother and with the authority of a father, and they're initiated on kech days. So that's why I was linking, um, you know, counseling as a form of healing with that particular (laughs) day sign, but they are said to have another talent, uh, uh, as well, and uh, you know they have two healing talents, um, and the other one is midwifery. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, she, says. she says, "I am a midwife also, but to beautiful books." She's a professional writing coach. Oh, Not baby. this is this is in addition to energy healing work. Well, so, you know, I'm not but a beautiful manifestation because, of this. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Kek is so multifaceted. I mean, these people, they just have, like, energy to spare. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So from here, let's go to this uh, this last part, Kenneth. Okay. We talked about, um, um, well, your, your healers, a few of them have, have expressed their kind of puzzlement. How can Westerners be so ill? You have everything you need. You have healthy babies. You have access to food. You, right. know, you have a cushy lifestyle, et cetera. Um, and then I think in your working with them, um, they kind of led you to uh, some kind of a healing ceremony that would address where we in our modern civilization are kind of disconnected. Can you you explain and describe that for us? Yes. Um, You know, unhappiness, of course, is a universal thing. Um, It's not limited to our society. Uh, They do kind of wonder why we're so unhappy if we have so much, you know, to them, unhappiness usually will be something, you know, like, oh, well, one of the babies died, you know, um, you know something very, uh, very primal. Uh, but they're aware that people have uh, psychological difficulties and they're just, you know, stressed out, anxiety ridden, you know, maybe sad, depressed, whatever. That, that, that exists in their society and they, they sometimes find that uh, the usual remedies like herbs and massage don't always work with this kind of stuff. So they have um, a ritual uh, that I was taught. And, you know, most rituals that I've seen, in fact, I, I'm trying to think of an exception and I can't think of an exception to the rule, they're all variations on the basic Mayan fire ceremony, which is to say that, you know, we would begin, um, well, we, we would first we would uh, build an altar and uh, its foundation would be the canil, 
or seed symbol uh, drawn on the ground in sugar, and then we would pile up uh, offerings on top of it, and then we would do what you did at the very beginning of this program. We would turn to the four directions, and we would, you know, open it with uh, uh, invocations to the Jaguar Fathers and perhaps, you know, the the the, the Kiche prayer. And then after that, after the fire is lit, then the person who is in need of healing is uh, taken to the fire. And what they did uh, with me was they had fresh bunches of rue, you know, just the simple plant that you can buy in any uh, health food store grows in your garden. And in, in the various types of rue, this is rue de graviolens L., and they held it to my head because uh, uh, Rue is believed to uh, cleanse your thoughts and your mind. And after they've removed all the negativity, um, they, they cast the Rue into the fire because now, now it has you know, become uh, um, um, filled with uh, uh, um, your, your bad thoughts that need to be uh, removed. And then, you know, since uh, stomach um, upsets are often also considered to be, you know, something that you just feel queasy because you feel bad about life, you know, type of thing. Um, so uh, in, in this uh, respect, um, they also held chamomile, because that's the, the great, you know, stomach medicine, uh, to my stomach. And then they threw that in the fire. And then... Um, After that, there were some more offerings, and finally we were led up, you know, very close to the fire, uh, so much so that, I, I mean, th th this sounds funny. I'm almost six feet tall, and Doña Victoria is about four foot nine, and she grabbed me with such force and pulled me to the fire that for a minute I thought she was going to toss me in as an offering. Uh, but uh, then she had <laughs> us uh, kneel close to the fire and, uh, you know, say prayers of thanks uh, for the day sign and for the healing that we were receiving upon that day. And then uh, after the days had been counted, which is what I think you're about to do next, um, you know, then then uh, we smudged with with the, the the smoke from the sacred fire, which is considered an, an, another form of healing. You know, uh, one more time, and uh, so basically, basically, it's like a fire ceremony, except you know. Uh, when, when the person, uh, usually in the fire ceremonies that we attend, midway through after the counting of the days, you know, when, when they speak the names of the days again, we walk forward to receive a little smudging, you know, when they call out our day sign. Here it's much more elaborate, you know. Uh, there's chanting that's done over you to uh, release negativity. Uh, there's the rue, which uh, releases uh, negativity. Sometimes they splash uh, all kinds of different uh, liquids in, in, in your face. Um, and uh, then there's the, the chamomile, you know, all these uh, different things that remove negativity and that are then, you know, offered as a sacrifice into the fire because it is as if you are offering up all your problems, you know, to the divine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this isn't really something we do for ourselves. Um, we do that in the context, do you think, with a, with another person who's helping us hold that intention around the fire? Well, let okay. Um, I'm only going to be able to give you uh, half answers to this one. Uh, and my answers are... Um, I have never seen a person perform that kind of a ritual on themselves. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I've never specifically heard anyone say that you try. Mm -hmm. So that, that's about as far mm -hmm. as my knowledge extends. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, well, this is... This is really, really 
wonderful information, and there's a whole lot more in this Jaguar Medicine book. So um, there's recipes and there's listings of different healing modalities and 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 methods, and it's it's rich with uh, mm-hmm. information that really kind of helps you understand how the calendar and how the date and the laws interact with all of this. We do have a question from guest nine. It's a little unrelated, but maybe not, because uh, I don't know the answer. She's at, or he or she is asking, what if you know Kenneth? What Kiragua means, as in Kiragua over there by Rio Dulce. You know what that Kiri, means? Kiragua. Um, I have heard. So many different interpretations that I would not want to choose between them as to what the actual word means. I do know that, you know, in addition to the uh, to the formal name, each place has a kind of symbolic name that is attached to it. And Kirigua is known as the place of the symbols because those truly gigantic uh, um Daily that they have there, you know, the, the, the standing stones are carved with perhaps the com- most complex, the deepest and the most profound symbols uh, that we know of in the Maya world. Okay. But as for the exact etymology of the word, I've, I've heard many different interpretations and I don't know which one is right, so I don't want to go spreading any misinformation. <laughs> well, here's here's a connection that they're making. They're saying Keriwa, as in K-E-R-I-W-A-H, means eagle in Algonquian, which is an unrelated angle, language, but they think it may be the sound of the eagle's cry. Well, um, when it comes to uh, pre-Columbian connections, uh, uh, you know, between different peoples, uh, connections that are not recognized by anthropologists, I would rather let the indigenous people themselves um, answer those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was just recently at a conference in Albuquerque, and one of the most amazing things that... uh, I remember about it is that uh, when the Hopi elders sat down with the Maya elders, it took them about 15 minutes to conclude that uh, uh, even though they lived in uh, different uh, ecological environments, that they were basically one culture. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm, 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 I would have to leave judgments like that to the indigenous folks themselves. They, they can say better than <laughs> So that. many connections. Yeah. No, when the, when the elders come up here to visit us in the Midwest, they all know that they've been here before. Yeah. I mean, the, their their sense of that is just very, very uh-huh. strong. Yeah. So we're at uh, nine minutes after the hour. Um, yeah. Time to wrap up. Um, I'm going to just mention a, a few announcements. Um, one of them is that if you folks wish to connect with Kenneth after this call, um, the best way to do that is on his website, which is uh, jaguarwisdom.org. And you can find his email address there. You can find uh, a place to uh, read about a description of the book or books, because he's got several, as well as um, a a little shop that you can buy the book from that that website. Um, He also has a Facebook page that's under the name of Jaguar Wisdom, which is one of the like pages. So if you like it, you'll get his pretty regular feed of information about the different day signs and, and other programs and activities that he has going on. Um, the Curandera Project, the one that uh, literally funded the uh, their uh, his and Anita's ability to put this um, book Jaguar Medicine together. Uh, access to that is on the website and 
uh, information about that also comes through the Facebook page. So that's a, a great way to continue the discussion and, and continue to be showered with the uh, esoteric information that Kenneth has been able to translate so beautifully for us here in the Western world. A um, couple of other announcements. We have a uh, summer solstice fire ceremony uh, happening here in Chicago uh, on the 21st, which is Friday. Uh, the day is going to be for wind or for eek. Um, I know that there are other solstice ceremonies, uh, Mayan and otherwise, going on all around the uh, all around the world. So, if you can, I take uh, active participation in those because one clear message that comes through the book Jaguar Medicine is how important it is to go to ceremony, to perform the ritual, um, all in the name of staying in harmony with all the elements, all the ancestors, all the Nawales, all the energies that... uh, that enable us to become um, fully realized uh, human beings. So take advantage of those. It's supposed to be a super moon, which means that it's it's going to be very close to the Earth. Uh, full moon, I think, is Friday night. Um, so take advantage of that because that amplifies all of your intentions. Um, our next telewebcast will be on Monday, July 1st. Uh, that is a one road or a one act day, and uh, Jeff Grant and uh, another uh, another gentleman are going to be joining us to talk about those energies. And we also have many other events happening this summer. Um, you can go to the Mayan Cross uh, web page or website and look on the events section. Uh, because we have other uh, ceremonies and sacred tours. Tata Pedro uh, is going to be back in the United States for two months. They'll be here in September and October in the Midwest, in New York, in Seattle. So um, there's still a lot a lot of activity going on. So I won't go naming each one of those events, but um, let's wrap the call now um, by... Um, going back to center and feeling the energies of Kawak, feeling the power, the force, the guidance and direction from Kawak. And this is being present with us today and also will be in tune with us over the next 13 days. So this is a wonderful time to set intentions for you, your loved ones, your communities. And we can do the count in uh, Kiche. And I will read it unless Kenneth, do you have your 13 numbers memorized? (laughs) <laughs> Otherwise, we'll do call and response. Um, I, I, it's, I, I, the only one I sometimes forget is six, isn't it, Washid? Six is, I'm typing them in now. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six, Waqib. Waqib, okay. <laughs> so it, it's Hun, Keb, Oshib. Kahib, Hob, Wak, Wukub, Shahib, and so forth. Yeah, I know it. I I, I know how to do it. Um, but I'm, I, you have your own style of counting the days, which is geared okay, to your... Okay, you've been doing um, them with us. Okay, um, so go ahead. I, I admire the fact that you've got them memorized. I don't yet. I'm working on it, but... <laughs> okay, I mean, that's just, the... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know your style of doing it, and, and your audience does, so I'll just join in, okay? Okay. Okay, are we ready? I'm ready. So, simply, it's Un Kawak. Un Kawak. Un Kawak. Un Kawak. 
Keb Kawak. Keb Kawak. Oheb Kawak. Oheb Kawak. Oheb Kawak. Kaheb Kawak. Kaheb Kawak. Kawak. Hob Kawak. Hob Kawak. Kawak. Wakib Kawak. Wakib Kawak. Wakib Kawak. Ukib Kawak. Ukib Kawak. Ukib Kawak. Washakib Kawak. Washak <laughs> Gracias, Ahau. Gracias, Madre. Gracias, Padre. Gracias, Kenneth <laughs> and Jeff and all of you who are joining us in these beautiful opportunities to be together. Do you want to know how to say Let's you're welcome? Uh, when you say thank you, you know, we say maltios. Do you know how to say you're welcome? No, tell us. Ahau, see you week, which means Ahau is grateful to you. See week? See you week. See you week. Is that C-E-U? I think it's probably S-I-Y-A-W-I-Q. Sili, who? S I Y. Uh huh. A W I Q. See you week. All right. Yeah, new word of the day. The last okay. <laughs> word of the day. We'll get them. We'll have. We may have twenty words learned by okay. the end of the series. <laughs> Thank you, Ken, so much for being here. Um, All righty. So All happy right. that you could join us and everyone enjoy this next Tracina. Uh, reflect on the intentions and uh, may Ohio be with you. May Kawak be with you. Okay. Farewell. Farewell. Chebec Chik, which means uh, hasta la vista until we meet again. Chebec Chik. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, uh, goodbye, all. Okay, yes, thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Chenek Cheek. <laughs>